What is going on sneaker fans? Welcome back to the channel and a very happy Crucible Eve to all of you. We are just one sleep away from the World Championship getting started in Sheffield tomorrow morning 10am when Luca Brassell kicks off the tournament with the beginning of his title defence. And look, it's going to be a strange tournament for me on a personal note. As some of you that's seen the channel before will be aware, I am a huge Neil Robertson fan. So this is going to be the first year that I've ever watched a Snooker World Championship where Neil isn't involved. Um, I suppose the silver lining for me is I just get to enjoy the next 17 days purely as a neutral snooker fan. You know, there's not going to be any stress. There's not going to be any tension when it comes to, you know, hoping and praying that, that Neil wins a second world title. That's out the window. And, you know, even though Neil Robertson didn't qualify, we still have a really strong bunch of qualifiers this year. And quite a few of them have a lot of Crucible experience in between them as well. I made a video before the qualifiers started where I went through all the 16 sections and I tried to predict the 16 qualifiers. And quite frankly, I had a bit of a shocker. <laughs> I only got five out of 16 for correct qualifiers picked. And, you know, that either shows the complete unpredictability of the World Championship qualifiers, or perhaps it shows my complete lack of sneaker knowledge. It's a 50-50. I'll let you decide which one is more likely. Um, but yeah, we have a really strong lineup, as I say. You know, we've got players in the top 16 who are in great form, and we've got plenty of experience within the qualifiers this year who could potentially cause a few upsets. And so... The full draw for the first round has been made yesterday. And this video, I'm going to look at all 16 first round matches. I'm going to have a look at the key statistics within each match and ultimately try and predict the correct score for all 16 matches as well. Before doing so, I did do a little bit of research into the past few tournaments just to see on average how many qualifiers win a first round match at the Crucible. Um, in 2021, two qualifiers won. In 2022, three qualifiers won. And then last year, four qualifiers won. So sort of year on year, we're steadily getting more and more. Um, but I was actually quite surprised because typically I remember it being around sort of five, six, seven um, qualifiers winning their first round matches. It can be a bit of a minefield, particularly because the top seed is coming a little bit cold especially as the qualifiers have just had to play at least two best of 19s to get through to the venue. Another slightly surprising statistic this year is we've only got one debutant, that's Joe O'Connor. In my preview of the qualifiers, um, I was saying that typically, on average, there's been three debutants for the past few years. So only one shows that this year, experience really was the order of the day. So going straight into the draw, and we begin right at the beginning with defending champion Luca Brassell, and he's up against one of the most dangerous qualifiers in David Gilbert. Um, as Luca Brassell will be very well aware, he is not only facing the daunting prospect of having to defend a world championship, he's defending a first world championship, which means the Crucible curse is going to be looming right over his, over his head. David Gilbert specifically said after qualifying that he did not want to play 10 a.m. Saturday or Sunday. So, of course, what would happen is he finds himself playing first day 10 a.m. against the defending champion. This will be the sixth appearance for Luca Russell at the Crucible versus 10 appearances for David Gilbert at the sport's biggest stage. And talking about Gilbert in the qualifiers, I do think in general he looked pretty strong. Um, he beat David Lilly and Zhao Gudong, making four tons in the process. And, you know, it has been a long while coming to see him return to this kind of scoring form. And this is going to be a real stern test for the Crucible Curse nerves of Luca Brussel. When the draw was made, um, I couldn't think off the top of my head of any matches that these guys have played. And when you look at the head-to-head, -head, they've only ever played once before which considering they're two players that have been near the top of the game for the best part of the past decade, that is a little bit surprising. Um, that one previous meeting came all the way back in 2015 at the Shanghai Masters, and Luca Brussel won that 5-3. So in terms of head-to-head, -head, there's not much to go on when trying to predict the winner of this match. 
And ultimately, I'm just going on a bit of a gut feeling. And I think this is going to go close. And I think it's going to be really nervy. Um, both players can score. Both players can pot. And I'm just going to back Luke Brassell. Um, I think it's going to go, you know, deep into Saturday evening. Um, and the only reason I'm backing Brassell is Dave Gilbert hasn't found himself in too many high pressure matches sort of on the big stage in, in recent years. And Luca Brassell hopefully will be able to draw from all the confidence he got 12 months ago. Uh, so for me, it's going to finish 10-8 to Luca Brassell. The second match features the number 16 seed Robert Milkins up against Pang Junk Su. Now, in my preview of the top 16 players, I talked about how poor Milkins' season has been. Um, but you know what? Pang Junk Su hasn't had an awful lot to shout about this season either. He's only had one single run to the last 16 at any tournament this season. Pang, of course, made his debut at the Crucible last year, losing to O'Sullivan in the first round. And you know what? Once he got settled in that match, he did give a pretty good account of himself. It was just it took him so long to settle that by the time he did, O'Sullivan was too far clear to pull it back. Um, and, you know, at the qualifiers, he had two tight wins over Oliver Brown and Chow Yu Peng to qualify as well. And you know what? This is arguably one of the hardest matches to call of the lot because not only are both players completely out of form, but they've also never played each other outside of the Championship League. So there isn't even like a head-to-head -head record to go on either. Um, so this, therefore, is just a gut feeling. And I think if Pan can settle into the match faster than he did 12 months ago, I do think he can make life difficult for Milkins. So I'm going to go for my first qualifier to win and predict a 10-6 win for Pang jong Su. The third match in the draw is one of the most eye-catching draws of the entire first round. We have two players who, between them, have over 40 Crucible appearances to their name. Ali Carter, of course, a two-times finalist, while Stephen Maguire, well, he's been to two semi-finals. Outside of the Championship League or the Snooker Shootout, they've played each other 14 times, and you know what, actually, I would have thought that two players who have been at the top of the game for so long might have had a few more big meetings than they actually have. The head-to-head -head is 9-5 in Ali Carter's favour, but the key match to highlight is that semi-final in 2012, where Ali won 17-12. I thought, actually, Steve Maguire looked pretty good, you know, as good as he has done all season, to be honest, at the qualifiers. And I was probably more impressed with how level-headed he seemed, you know, particularly in his last qualifying match against Wan Xu Shun, who pushed him quite hard. And there were times where things weren't going Stephen's way, but there was never any sign of frustration. He kept it very cool. Um, and, you know, it's often said that that is regularly Stephen's undoing. But, you know, he held it together very well and got two big wins to qualify. And, you know, ultimately, though, one of these men has had a much better season than the other. And with a better head-to-head -head also in his favour, I do think Ali will have a bit too much in this battle of the veterans. So my prediction here is Ali Carter to win 10-7. Up next, we've got the 2005 champion, Sean Murphy. And, you know what, on paper, this looks like a similar type of matchup for Sean to last year, where he faces a dangerous young Chinese player who, whilst on paper he'll be favourite to beat, can also still have the potential to cause the 2005 champion a big headache. Liu Haoshan is coming back for his fourth appearance at the Crucible and will be aiming to get back to the last 16 for the first time since he did making his debut back in 2018. There's only three previous meetings between the pair and after Liu won their first in China in 2018, Murphy has won their last two with an aggregate score of 11 to 1. I say this is another match that screams banana skin, but I do think Sean Murphy will be ultra motivated not to lose in the first round again. And I do fancy him to come through with a little bit to spare in this one. So for me, it's going to be Sean Murphy to win 10 4. Next up, we've got Mark Selby. And when it comes to Crucible experience, this is probably the biggest mismatch of the lot in the first round matches. We have Selby, a four times world champion, facing the only debutant to make it to the Crucible this year. I talked in my qualifiers preview that this had been a pretty quiet season for Joe, but he pulled together two huge wins. First to beat 
Julian Leclerc 10-1. And then he had that marathon finale to his Judgment Day match against Matthew Selt to earn his first ever appearance on the main stage. When we were looking at the head-to-head, the pair have played each other four times. Selby's won all four, with their last meeting coming at the 2022 English Open. And, you know, as it is always the case for every single debutant, for Joe, it'll be how quickly he can adapt to his new surroundings. Some debutants look right at home at a crucible. You know, players like Jack Jones, Jamie Jones, Asni McGill, all made quarterfinals on their debut. But it can also flip the other way and be very easy for them to be like rabbits in the headlights and get swallowed by the venue. Now, Selby's confidence as I said in one of my preview videos, is not as high this year. And, you know, if Joe can apply some early pressure, this could become a real test for the four times world champion. But it'll be a brave man to go for the debutant here. And for me, I'm going to have Selby to win again with a little bit to spare. So for me, my prediction is Mark Selby to win 10-5. Up next, we have one of the stories of the qualifiers. And that was 52-year-old Dominic Dale coming through to the Crucible, becoming the oldest player since Steve Davis back in 2010 to do so. And, you know, it's a huge story, not only his age, but also Dominic Dale talked very recently about retiring. And now here he is back at the Crucible for the 10th time in his career and the first time for 10 years after he made it to the quarterfinals there back in 2014. You know, he also got to a quarterfinal back in the year 2000 as well plenty of experience and I perhaps wrote him off a little bit too quickly in my preview. I didn't really give him a second thought and you know he's completely proved me wrong. Two fantastic wins to get to the venue. Playing Kyron though does feel like a little bit of a step too far for him and whilst it has been a quiet season for Wilson I mentioned in my preview video the fact that he has made 61 centuries this season and I'm not convinced that Dom can match this level of scoring. And we all know that Kyron can mix it tactically as well if he needs to. So, you know, both aspects of the game, Kyron is heavy favourite here. The head-to-head, well, that stands 6-2 in Wilson's favour, with Dale's last victory coming in 2015. And this will be the first time that they've ever faced each other in a match longer than the best of seven. And, you know, look, it's a, it's an absolute fairy tale sort of story for Dominic Dale. And he's not going to be there to make up the numbers. He'll give it a real good go. Uh, but for me, I do think Wilson will just be far too strong here. So my prediction is Kyron Wilson to win 10-3. Next, we've got the next four-time Crucible champion versus the man who's, well, quite frankly, been haunting my nightmares for the past couple of nights. But in fairness, you know, what a performance it was from Jamie to beat Neil, especially considering Neil had begun the second session by storming into an 8-5 lead. But, you know, Jamie's nerve never faltered and it was a performance that really reminded me so much of, like, Graham Dot in his absolute prime. You know, tenacious, gritty, and he gave absolutely everything into every shot that he played. You know, it was a fully deserved win. Um, It wasn't a match that Neil threw away. It was a match that Jamie Jones took and won and absolutely every credit to him. And, you know, he'll need every bit of that again against one of the Crucible's best ever competitors. Good news for Jamie is he has reached a Crucible quarterfinal. He's beaten Sean Murphy here twice and he's also beaten Stephen Maguire there as well. The head to head, while these two haven't played all that much, uh, with four meetings between them, it's two wins apiece. Jamie winning their last meeting in Scotland two years ago. And you know, all of this tells you is that Higgins needs to be at his best here. Jamie will emotionally need to get himself back down to zero and ready for another battle. But he's done it before here and he could very well do it again. So I'm going to stick my neck out and have a second uh, qualifier to win. And that's Jamie Jones to beat John Higgins 10-8. Next up, we have Mark Allen against Robbie Williams. And, well, Williams, he is back for his fourth World Championship appearance and his first since 2016. Also, a pretty unique statistic that was raised a few times um, in that Judgment Day commentary is that in all four of his Judgment Day wins, all four of them have come in deciding frames. So there's certainly been no lack of bottle from him. 
At the Crucible though, he is still yet to win a match, although he has gradually been winning more frames. He firstly lost 10-2 to Robertson on his debut. He then lost 10-7 to Stuart Bingham. And then he lost 10 8 in 2016. And, you know, it was a fantastic result for him this year as well, beating Wakelin, a man who's reached a final this season to qualify. He has unfortunately found himself drawn against one of this season's outstanding performers and a man who has won three of their previous four meetings. Interestingly, every single match they've played has finished in a whitewash though none of these matches have been longer than a best of nine, so I very much doubt we'll see another whitewash here. However, as I said in my segment about Allen in my tournament preview, I do genuinely think he is primed for another genuine title challenge this year and can only see him winning this one. Uh, so for me, Mark Allen to win 10-5. Kicking off the second half of the draw now, and we have five times ranking event winner this season, Judd Trump. And you could consider Judd to be a little bit unfortunate here again. Last year, he drew arguably the toughest qualifier in Anthony McGill. And this year, he has drawn another one of the players the seeds ideally would have wanted to avoid. For Faye, well, he's back for his third consecutive Crucible appearance and is showing further signs of being a man sort of on the verge of cracking into the top 16 very soon. On his debut back in 2022, Hussein faced Judd Trump as well in the first round. And on that occasion, Judd came out a comfortable 10-4 winner. But then he came back last year and he beat Ding Xunhui 10-6 in the first round before then getting involved in some, I would say, unnecessary verbal before his match with O'Sullivan. And then O'Sullivan then went on to comfortably dispatch him in the last 16. And you know, you have to say, in his first three Crucible appearances... Playing Judd twice, O'Sullivan and Ding is about as tough as it gets for Hussein. Um, the head-to-head -head between the pair is in Judd's favour, winning seven of their previous 11 meetings, with their biggest matchup being that first round two years ago. But, you know, after losing first round last year and after having the seasons that he's had this year, I do think Judd will have that extra motivation not to let that happen again this year. And he is, you know, playing far better this season than he was last. Um, it's an incredibly difficult opening test for him. But again, as he has shown all season, he has that ability to raise his game if and when he needs to. And I think he's going to need to again in this match. So for me, I'm going to go for Judd to win 10-7. Next up, we have Tom Ford against Ricky Walden. And this is going to be Tom Ford's first stint as a seeded player at the World Championships. And it begins with an opening tie against Ricky Walden, a man making his ninth Crucible appearance. The former semi-finalist came through a Judgment Day decider for the second year in a row. And as a multiple tournament winner, he is another of the experienced qualifiers that the seeds ideally would have wanted to avoid. Tom, though, I imagine, will come into this year's championship as confident in his own game as he probably ever has been. He's never won a match at the Crucible before, but... For any of you Tom Ford fans, if you're looking for a positive, well, Luke Brassell hadn't won a Crucible match before last year either. And who was Luke Brassell's first round opponent last year? Well, it was Ricky Walden. And we all know what happened there. There's not much separating these two when it comes to the head-to-head. -head. Walden just about edging their nine previous meetings 5-4. Their last meeting, though, coming nearly four years ago, which Walden won in a decider. Everything here points to it being another close match. Tom Ford, you have to say, is in much better form, but Walden has the upper hand when it comes to experience at the World Championship. I typically feel like Walden has a pretty consistent level at the Crucible, and whilst Tom hasn't always been able to perform his best here, either way, I expect this to be another close one, but I am backing Tom to bring his you know, newfound confidence into this match and edge it. So for me... Tom Ford to win 10-8. Another man making his first appearance as a top 16 seed at the Crucible is Zhang Ander. The surprise package of the season will be hoping that he too can bring this sort of newfound level he's produced this season into the sport's biggest stage. And you know, just like Tom Ford, Zhang has also never won a match at the Crucible. So it really is just copy and paste everything I said about Tom into this section about Zhang Ander as well. 
And he's up against Jack Jones, and Jack, well, he's back for his second Crucible appearance after making his very impressive debut last year. You know, he beat Barry Hawkins to qualify, and then he beat Ali Carter and Neil Robertson at the venue. And he also pushed Mark Allen very close in the quarterfinals as well. This year, well, he scored two further notable wins against Jamie Clark and Xiao Yu Long to qualify again. So he is really quickly building up a reputation as a man with a game built for the biggest stage. If we're looking at these two players as well, they're almost like mirror images of each other in terms of how they play the game. Both are very level-headed, are solid in all departments of the game. So it's another match that on paper looks very, very difficult to call. The head-to-heads, while the pair have played each other three times before, with Jones winning twice, one of those wins coming this season at the Welsh Open. And for Zhang, well, his last win, well, his one and only win, was 14 years ago in Shanghai. As I say, it is another difficult match to call, but I am mainly being swayed by the ease in which Jack adjusted to the Crucible last year, and I do fancy him to do something similar this year too. So my prediction is Jack Jones to win 10-9. The eye-catching draws, well, they just keep continuing to come here as we now have three-time Crucible champion Mark Williams, and he faces last year's semi-finalist Xi Jiawei. Now for Xi, I think it's a very good sign that he's managed to put last year's disappointment behind him so quickly and qualify for the Crucible at his very next attempt. Although he was on the very brink of losing 10-8 in his first qualifying match to Ben Mertens, who was in the snooker's required stage before losing that frame, and then C dominated the decider. Now, it's really a question of whether the venue itself has left any scars on him. You know, can he draw upon the positives of last year, you know, when he beat Sean Murphy, Milkins, Anthony McGill? Or will he only be thinking about that loss in the semi-finals when he was 14-5 up on Luke Brassell? Whatever the answer to that is, though, he knows that he will be up against regardless against the most recent tournament winner in Mark Williams. Fresh off that sensational tour championship win, Mark's tail will be up and that is bad news to everyone else in the draw. If that tour championship win hadn't have happened, I would have been putting serious consideration into C getting another crucible scalp here, but it is just impossible to ignore Mark's performance in Manchester a couple of weeks ago. So for me, it's going to be the Welsh potting machine to win 10-6. Now then, we have arguably the draw of the round. Whichever seeds that was unfortunate enough to draw Jack would have been cursing their luck. And that man this year is Ding Shun Wee, who in truth has not had it easy with first round ties at the World Championship in recent years. He lost to Hussein Fafai last year. He lost to Kyron Wilson the year before that when he was a qualifier. And then in 2021, he had to play Stuart Bingham and lost that as well. So Ding really has been a magnet for getting the hardest possible draws here. And this year is going to be no different. For Jack, well, he passed the test of the qualifiers with ease in truth, comfortably dispatching Hong Yu and Matty Stevens, making six centuries along the way as well. And it is that natural ability to make the game look so effortlessly easy That makes him so dangerous, and you can't imagine it will take him very long to get back into the top 16. Like I say, this really isn't the draw that Ding needed. I do think that he's playing very well, and he'll know he's lost first rounds the past three years, and I wouldn't blame him for rolling his eyes when this draw was made as well. As one of just four Chinese players in the draw this year, he remains as the country's biggest hope for a first snooker world champion, And whilst me and the rest of the snooker world would be very, very happy to see that happen, unfortunately, I think he's going to fall at the first hurdle again here. So my prediction is Jack Lazowski to win 10-8. Next up in the draw, we have Gary Wilson up against Stuart Bingham. And it must be said, I wasn't the most confident in Stuart's chances of getting through the qualifiers this year on the back of two very mediocre seasons. However, to his massive credit, he battled his way to a couple of huge wins, firstly beating Carrington from 4-1, 7-3 and 9-7 behind to win in a decider, and then on judgment day he came through another real battle with youngster Louis Heathcote, winning 10-8 after being on the verge of falling 9-7 behind in that match. 
The good news for Stewart, therefore, is not only has he qualified, but he'll also be battle-hardened by coming through two tense finishes, and that could just be the spot that he needed to get his career back on track. The bad news, on the other hand, is he is up against another of this season's outstanding performers. I talked in detail about how I think serious consideration should be put into the threat that Gary Wilson carries this year. He's going to be back as a seed, as he was last year, and he'll be looking to go a couple of steps further than he did back in 2019 when he got to the semi-finals. These two have only ever met at the Championship League, which I don't ever consider when looking at a head-to-head. So this, effectively, is their first ever meeting in a proper match. And it's another that has the hallmarks of going sort of all the way. Stuart proved that he'll be up for a battle, but I just have an inkling that Gary Wilson will edge this one. So I'm going to go for a decider and for Gary Wilson to win 10-9. Now forgive me for sounding a little bit like a broken record in this video, but again we have another draw that really stands out. Ryan Day, while he almost surrendered a 7-2 lead on Judgment Day, eventually falling over the line to beat Scott Donaldson 10-9 and earn himself a 14th Crucible appearance. So he is another player in this draw with bags and bags of Crucible experience. And out of all the first round matches this year, this is the one with the largest head to head. Outside of the Championship League and the Snooker Shootout, the pair have played each other 20 times, and they lead the head to head 12 8. Their first ever match was all the way back in the year 2000, they winning 10 1 at the World Championship qualifiers. And you know, since then, they've also met in a wild card match for the Masters, as well as a final at the 2017 World Grand Prix which Barry won 10-7. So both of them are going to know each other's games inside and out. With all that said though, I can personally only see Hawkins winning this one. In general, it has been a good season. Getting a tournament under his belt last summer has helped him get back into the top 16 after missing out last year. And I think he'll be able to pull away early in this match and just about be able to nurse a healthy lead through to the finish line. So for me, it's Barry Hawkins to win 10-6. And now finally, we have the Rocket. In the headlines for all the wrong reasons, as per usual, but he comes here as the favourite to take home the title and all the associated records that would come with it. Good news for O'Sullivan fans, as if you needed any more good news, is that since 2004, O'Sullivan has only lost in the first round once. And that was that surprise defeat to amateur James Cahill five years ago. And, you know, apart from that hiccup, we've become so used to seeing him just breeze through the first round without much trouble. But with Jackson Page, he certainly deserves respect. It had been an awful season for Jackson until about a month ago when he reached the semis in China. And he's packed that up with a strong showing in the qualifiers to make his second crucible appearance. His Judgment Day match in particular against Nofon Sankham was a superb watch, and even though he was helped by a massive fluke when he was 9-8 down, he won the decider with a flawless century, and it was a break compiled by a man who looked under no pressure at all, something his mentor Mark Williams has made a career of doing. And you know, this match also gives off a strong resemblance to O'Sullivan's first round match four years ago in 2020 when he played Tepchea Anu. Just like Tepi, Page is a frighteningly quick player and very attacking as well. You know, he'll go for just about anything and if he's on it, we'll get a high percentage of those pots as well. When O'Sullivan beat Anu back in 2020 10-1, he won that in under two hours and it was a record for the quickest match at the Crucible. And whilst I do think Page will take more than just a single frame off the rocket this year, I do expect this to be a very quick one as well and I do expect O'Sullivan to win. So my prediction here is O'Sullivan to win 10-5. And so that completes my roundup of all last 32 matches at the 2024 Snooker World Championship. I predicted four qualifiers to win, which would match the number from last year. And honestly, this lineup is a bit of a minefield, and I know every single year that cliche of this being the strongest ever lineup gets rehashed. But this really is as hard of a draw as you're ever likely to see. Williams, Robbie Williams that is, he's the lowest ranked player at 48 in the world. So there's no real sort of rank outsider in the draw. 
and there is plenty of reason to be concerned if you're a fan of any of the seeds here. As always though, I just hope it's a really good tournament and even though 17 days feels like a long time, it always goes in a flash so make sure to savour every single moment of it. Especially in times like this where there's beginning to be uncertainty regarding the Crucible's future. If you have any predictions for the first round, of course, do let me know in the comments below and I'll catch up with you all in the next video.